Hello everyone in the Dolly Cam. I am Rachel and we are here with such a special opportunity for you tonight. So we already saw a little bit of the uh, Simon and Halbig special exhibit that's going on here at UFDC. But tonight, Shelly and Rosalie Weil have taken time out of their day to give us a special curated one-on-one -on -one in their special exhibits. So we are going to be chatting with them and getting up close and personal with their incredible dolls that they brought to UFDC for all of us. So I'm gonna get behind the camera and we're gonna go in and meet these ladies and see their dolls. Hello, hello, Hi. hello. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for joining us live in the Dolly Cam. Oh, our pleasure. Rosalie and Shelly, a wonderful mother and daughter team. We all just love you so very much and thank, thank you. you for being here. Tell us a little bit about, I was speaking with Shelly earlier, uh, what you guys have been doing to get ready and to prepare <laughs> for this incredible special exhibit. Well, it's been a lot of work, but it's been, of course, the joy of my life to do this type of thing, to present the dolls the way we feel they should be presented as a study group and uh, as a playful, childlike um, intention, I think, that Simon and Halbeck did when they made these dolls. Yes. Yeah. I thought, after seeing how many wonderful Simon and Halbecks we had, I thought, there's not been a lot of Simon and Halbeck exhibits, so we should do that. So you guys came up with the idea to have this special Shelly exhibit. Shelly did, yes. Oh, well, Shelly, yeah. thank you so much. I'm sure you didn't quite know what you were getting into. But then no, it, it, it kind of starts, and then it goes, and then yes. it goes, and then it yes. goes. But you, your mission, the two of you, with the museum was to unite and to connect people with dolls. And so you are carrying on that legacy by bringing this special exhibit. I know it took 17 hours to set this all up. Is that all? <laughs> yeah. and a year or of more planning. And a year of planning. Yes. So thank yeah. you again. We are Pleasure. right here behind us. We see Uncle Sam and he is kind oh, of yes. at the helm of the ship welcoming us in. Yes. Yes. Tell us about him. He is so big. He is big. He is uh, not only big, but the modeling on this yes. doll is just spectacular. And of course, that's what Simon and Halbig is known for, is their beautiful bisque, mm -hmm. their exceptional modeling. And uh, I was discussing with someone today how I think they didn't wear out their molds. And that's why some of the dolls that are the same number look different, because I think they kept renewing the molds so that every doll looked like it was first out of the mold. And uh, of course, they made heads for many, many other companies, uh, not just in Germany, but in France. And, and they were dispersed around the world. Some were made only for certain countries, some only for certain companies. And uh, a lot of researchers that have done recent work and uh, discovered these, these interesting points about the company, mm -hmm. I think, has brought that to, to light for us. So some of these say attributed to Simon Halbig that's what we've come to believe. Others, of course, are marked, and they will say that on their labels, that they are marked. Cameron Reinhardt, Simon and Halbig. Right. Yeah. Oh, so much to learn. Shelly, has this, uh, this discovery and this um, presentation given you an even deeper love oh, yeah. for Simon and Halbig? Absolutely, and when you can see them all together, it's just, it's kind of breathtaking, and you know, like mom said, the most wonderful sculpting that happened, true artisans, true doll art that yes. were made for toys. Yes. So, yeah. So we are so excited to be here because we're going to get a highlight tour with the two of you. And there are, you have a little bit of everything in here. And a lot of these dolls retain their original clothing and provenance, which is oh, yeah. so hard to find. That's what we like. <laughs> it is the original clothing, hairstyles, all of that. But, of course, what I talk about here are not just the children who played with them and preserved them and kept their stories, but the families who did that and entrusted these dolls with amazing artifacts from the families. Their photographs, their certificates of graduation, albums and, and belongings that they passed down with the dolls. So you knew how mm -hmm. important the dolls were to these families. Yes. Here we start with um, 
dolls that heads that were made by Salman and Halberg, but for other companies. So we have like Heinwerk Handwork. We have who else? K Star R in here. Art. C M Bergman. C O D. So Brent many, and, and a lot of them did have the markings. But how how do you find out which company they were making them for? Well, most of the time, the company's name is marked on the doll, but mm -hmm. not always Simon Halbig. Sometimes just Halbig, sometimes S&H, um, but often through the research of uh, people like Mary Krombolz, uh, the Sieslicks in Germany, and uh, of course Jan Folk, who did what I call the Bible of Simon and Halbig, uh, they have discovered that these dolls uh, were made, the heads were made, not just not the dolls, but the heads were made for these companies. The only dolls that Simon and Halbig did completely themselves were the all bisques. Oh, really? Right. Oh, that is so interesting. Yeah. And I think it was also an honor to have Simon and Halbig make the heads for your dolls. And a, and a Cameron Reinhardt catalog, I believe it was from 1913, they actually brag that they have Simon and Halbig heads on their dolls. So they knew then the quality of this maker. It was truly a badge of honor because these, the maker, they were so progressive and some of the most iconic dolls that are just still so completely hot right now are from yeah. Simon and Helmick. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. And look at the diversity and as you move through here, mm -hmm. you'll see how many different kinds. These are the very early ones. The untinted discs and they have a definite look and uh, they, you know, they were play dolls, but very fragile, uh, and yet here they are today. Very progressive, but this one here, uh, you can see, she has a twist and turn body. Look at her body down there. She's the, the original twist and turn the girl. Twist Look at and that. Turn. Move over, Barbie Francie. Yes. Oh, wow. Look yeah, at that. So very progressive. How and, cool. And always originating. Very artistic, the boy back there with the luster. Oh, and look at his molded bonnet. bonnet. Yeah. See, we're here with you, and these are your dolls, so we can kind of get over the railing yes, a little can. bit. <laughs> <laughs> he is incredible. Mm. That luster bonnet, it's just breathtaking. And then this is how adults played with the dolls. Here's Miss 1934, wonderful 1159, uh, almost always made for Jamal, our French uh, firm. And here is what one group of women did. Look at these clothes that they created for Miss 1934. And wow. beautifully knit crochet lingerie made by an actual lingerie uh, couturier and um, furniture made by the husband and the box to carry them in. I mean, this is adult this playing is, dolls, big man, time. It's so much fun. So much fun. Back here on a 1078, this shows how doll playing never start, stops. Obviously, a doll from the 20s, but Ellen had her mother gift it to her in the 1940s when she was little, and she remade the wardrobe for her and the wig and everything in a 1940s style. Wow. You guys just included so much of everything. I had people come up to me at this convention saying this is the best thing they've ever seen. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's just, you know, isn't that nice. wonderful? It really just enhances their lives so much to see it. Now, there are some fabulous dolls in this case. Where do we yes. even start? Well, let's start with the Little Historic series, which so many people are very surprised to see because they say, I've never seen these dolls in these original costumes. And I believe this is their historical series from 1890. But look how cute. They are I mean, so cute. cute they are. I mean, look at this <laughs> little all bisque with her. Yes. Yeah. They are wonderful. And to the right, here's a 1385. I had never seen that number before, let alone that doll. It isn't listed in anything that I saw in my research, but there she is, marked Simon and Halbig, 1385. 1385. Darling little character. And she's just so small. <laughs> oh, she's wonderful. Here's some, some history that I just love. This is the childhood doll of Virginia Bullman Hart Cartwright, who lived from 1865 to 1954. Uh, in Washington State, where we where we're from, and this little wardrobe was probably made by Virginia for this fabulous little doll. And 1870 is the wardrobe time period, and here you know she played with it, but here it is today. 
for us to enjoy thanks to oh, it's so the wonderful. child and, and you're just keeping the her legacy and their legacy and what was important alive because it is important now this character doll underneath this All 152 right. yes. she's just beyond she is beyond <laughs> and when I bought her I you know I thought this had to be a portrait of somebody this isn't just a doll that they create that face for for no reason it's a sculpture of somebody and then I acquired this beautiful Queen Alexandra. I did the research and discovered the year this doll was uh, made in 1908. Uh, King Edward and Queen Alexandra visited Germany and I believe that this was uh, in commemoration of that. So I wrote an article about it and the fun part of that was I got letters back from people like Mary Hillier in England and other people who had the 152 saying, oh my gosh, we so agree with you that that is who this doll is. So oh, that isn't that great? fun to be affirmed, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and just as an aside to show you how our dolls lead us through history, there's an original invitation from King Edward of England to Mrs. Jane Eames to the coronation dinner on July 5th. 1902 and there's How the queen. special. Oh wow. Just breathtaking. Now these Simon and Halbigs, I've never seen an 1159 this large, first They're of all. Large, and yes. then there's there's a man and a woman. Man and a woman. They're just wonderful. And of course meant for the French trade in either um, exposition clothes for presentation at an exposition or as a commission. We're not sure. And there they are on the cover on the of Jan's cover. book, yes. Look at that. And all together, uh, all original from that time period, so around 1900. Just exquisite. Shelley and Rosalie, what, what is one of the ways, and I know there are tons of ways, but what is one of the ways that your lives have been enhanced by being a part of Dolphin? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's yeah. a way of it's life. A, yeah. Yeah. It's a way of life. Um, I always say I hated history as my worst subject, but <laughs> certainly these dolls have led me through history and the interest that they pique in humanity, mm -hmm. and they re represent everything about humanity I think that's ever happened, and the people there, and it connects you to, mm -hmm. to people from all these different time periods, not just the children, yeah. but their families, royalty, um, almost any event that took place. And it's very compelling to know that it, uh, the, the, the saying is a child will lead you, you know, mm -hmm. but I believe a doll can lead yeah. you too. Oh yeah. And for me, I've always loved history mm -hmm. and I just feel like, you know, we're just caretakers for a moment because hopefully they'll live a lot longer right. than we will. Yeah. And I just, I always felt like I was born in the wrong time and I feel like when I go through and see wardrobes of dolls and think about who owned them that I feel like I'm living in a different time period. and getting the best of the modern, but getting to go back in time. Isn't it a wonderful way to time travel? Totally. We just love it. <laughs> Here's the 1200 series we have here. The 1200 series, again, an, another iconic series. They made some large dolls they in these did. 1200 they series did. dolls. Yes, Tell us about this down. girl in the back that is holding a uh, picture. Well, I like to equate the dolls with at least the time period of, of the child and how they're dressed and so that representation uh, takes takes us back to an actual child wearing a similar outfit and um, you know you can see the inspiration for the doll mm -hmm. when you see that type mm -hmm. of thing. We look at 1248 and she is all original in a child uh, flapper. That is just to die for, <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, and the hat, yep. I just love it all. I'd wear it today. If they oh, I would too. <laughs> now these wonderful ethnic dolls were so interesting. I loved seeing this giant head for the 1329. Probably the largest size of that head, but also probably meant as a, as a plaything. And, um, you know, maybe it was used to promote, but um, it's it's definitely could have been wig, could have had a bonnet, mm -hmm. you know, and, and been dressed and been a, a plaything just as the others over there were. We love the originality of these. Um, 
thinking and about the time period and what you could have learned, mm -hmm. seeing that 1329 all in her original Asian outfit and being like, wow, wow. I've never seen and anything just, like that. Yeah. Well, the yeah. people that also saw this probably had never been even exposed to that kind right. of exactly. culture. Mm -hmm. And this one with her original headpiece and just the outfit. And her shoes. Yeah. yeah, look at the shoes, yeah. everybody. <laughs> but just think of a child seeing that for the first time and thinking, you know, where, where did that person people? come from? And it, it, it opened up a conversation yes. with their family who may not have known either, but maybe could have found out the chinoiserie, Chin <laughs> <laughs> as they call that. It, influence was uh, very intense at that time. Again, where you're looking at some of the other characters, these ethnic characters are just wonderful. Is this a XI? Or which no, this is she? a fourteen seventy. Oh, she's just fourteen seventy eight. And I say in here, you know, compare the fourteen seventy eight, uh, the mine leaving one seventeen, mm -hmm. the one, the three, the fourteen forty eight. They all have this look. Um, she's wearing metal uh, pieces in her headdress, and uh, she's from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands, a time and look at that whether she was a Protestant or a Catholic, depending on how they're worn. So Interesting. Even said a little bit about the people wearing them. Now this table, this has a wonderful provenance. It's just, it just, it goes on, it's heavenly. Ma Matilda Maddie Baker's doll, but this is just a very small amount of the wealth of material that came with her. And it's family albums, beautiful photographs of family and friends and gifts to the family. Her shoes, Maddie's shoes. Uh, her life right through the triptych over there of her as, you, as a young woman. And her, her books that she read. Her parents, there's her mother with a cow. Her father in front of the store that has her mother's maiden name on it. So, so maybe wonderful. that's how he met her. And then Maddie, handmade carved uh, furniture for the doll, it's just, um, to me, that just makes my heart skip. Doesn't <laughs> it just make your heart skip? Because yeah. there's just so much love <laughs> emanating right. from exactly. it. Exactly, and, and even artifacts like the, the eyepiece, uh, and in front of that, in case people don't know, it's a cigar uh, cutter. Cutter, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> this is the largest 939 I have ever seen in my Isn't life. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. yes. Sitting down. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, she is a big mama jama. Is. is that her original outfit? Yeah, as it far looks. As I know, it looks that's very original. To me, yes. And of course, they're playing with a wonderful 1300 um, bubble blower. And that's why is that one of your favorites, oh, Shelly? Yeah. Gosh, the technology used to make this bubble blower who actually blows, blows bubbles. bubbles is amazing. So if you look at her, she's got her little dish. You can put soapy water in it. You can wind her up. Her arm goes down, and as her arm comes up, she has a mechanism inside that makes her literally blow air out of her mouth and in through the little pipe and... Bubbles. It, it bubbles. Oh, how incredible. <laughs> and this can works. be seen in your in your documentary that right. you have yes. uh, for the museum. Yes. Yep. And Our that I believe is available on Amazon. Yep. And, uh, and here and, at, at and here at UDC. Yeah. So yes. that is definitely a documentary that everyone should purchase. This is another fun daisy. Oh, everyone had daisy, daisy right? Yeah. Or, or wanted daisy. Yes. This is the, the handwork daisy and uh, Ladies Home Journal. Um, Letty Lane, the paper dolls, doll, uh, was Daisy, and she was given as a, um, as a prize to young girls who sold the magazine subscriptions. Right. <laughs> but this one. It's the original multi-level market. Exactly. <laughs> this one has a wonderful little story because here is her owner, Toddy, oh, with at. all of her 28 <laughs> dolls, and the mother or whoever related that back. She to, was a hard worker. She <laughs> said, she said, pity the poor witty with 28 children. Oh, how funny. And this is the book for love of Mary Ellen that has the poor little girl uh, with the, the similar saying on there. And of course, Cute. the artist illustrator for that is our dear Rose O'Neill. Yes. But here comes her letter that Daisy wrote uh, to the owner. Uh, very sweet. 
um, but still being very little girl, right? It's just, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's quite it's just humorous. darling. Passed down with the doll all these years. Now this 900 series is a lot of fun. There are a lot of dolls in the 900 series that we just love. And here are some beautiful examples. Again, you guys have great examples of the large scale versions of these yeah. dolls. Yeah, I love, the, I love the large size. They can wear children's clothes for one thing. But compare, for instance, the 949s there, the very big one looking very childlike. The middle one, open mouth with square teeth totally different look, mm -hmm. same old number, and then the very early one, the swivel neck on a shoulder plate, and with a twill lady body. There. And they just and look completely different. Completely different. Mm -hmm. Same doll, different time periods. This one with the little trousseau is just <laughs> darling. It's been working hard. Now when we move oh, over wow. to this 1300 yeah. series, oh, this yeah. is this is Here the <laughs> yeah, This is where we start um, having heart palpitations yes. for sure. Yeah. The 1300 series. Tell us about the 1300 series as a whole. For one thing, of course, what stands out is the color. The the all of a sudden, never in the early dolls until the 900 series do you see the color, and it ranges here from very black to the brown to Indian red, if you would even a white beast clown. I mean, it, it is so, um, to me, it's so universal. All of a sudden, they're doing these play dolls. Yes. And, uh, but look at, the, look at the vastness of the sculpting. They actually sculpted the dolls to look like the ethnicity, the ethnicity that they are. Of the, of the dolls. Yes. And the people. And here we have the Indian, the American Indian. Yes, these, in, these American number, Indians are just... 1303, but look I at have the skulls. goosebumps looking look at, at these. Look at the different skulls. Three and different skulls. The one on skulls. the right, he looks like he's going to walk right over and say hi. <laughs> yes. So realistic. So and realistic. And then the little one, a different sculpt again. How or why was Simon and Helbig so progressive? at the time. You know, Did when they... these were made, they were just, um, um, Simon had already passed away in 1894. Uh, Halbig and his son, Aaron, were running the company. And then by 1920, according to Mary Cromwell's research, the company was owned by Cameron Reinhardt. So they had turned it over, sold it to them, and um, Perhaps but I believe they started, yeah, I think it was uh, the character reform of 1908 that really started the dolls to look more and more like real children, and then real adults, and mm -hmm. then real ethnicity. So, um, sadly, of course, the wars, World War I, World War II, uh, they could not survive. There were embargoes against German goods, and um, it was the demise of the company by 1932. Mm -hmm. Well, their legacy certainly lives on. Mm -hmm. We're looking at in the back these two mm -hmm. playful characters. These are a 1307 and a 1305. Mm -hmm. And that is obviously his original police Chanel. It is. It yes. has to be. Yes. Many of these are in original costume. Here is a here is a coke maker from 1912. Oh, he's fabulous. Uh -huh. Look at that wrinkly face, his furrowed <laughs> yeah. eyebrows. They put wrinkles right into the eyes, and they made him happy. And yes, he is happy. Oh. <laughs> Miss 1358 here, she is from Panama. Really? Yeah. Came with the history of an aunt and uncle purchasing them there, so that just shows you how far and wide these dolls went. And we don't normally think of them as coming from South America or right. in those areas. That's so interesting. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end on that case, but we have a couple more over here. Yeah. These uh, s uh, ladies are just so fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's the 1468 and the 1469 flappers, uh, er, the earliest in the uh, blue costume, and then uh, the shorter skirt as you see it going up with her flapper knees showing. <laughs> oh yes, she. 
Yeah. She, yes. With the well, you know, it was it was they they did things back then. They smoked cigarettes and they drank alcohol and, and they, they and they danced. Yeah. And they danced. And, yes. yes, it was all not allowed. But these flapper dolls are right. a wonderful representation. And um, this 1480 uh, 1448 yes. character. Now see that there is a similarity. You see to the 1478, yes. and then in the next case you'll see with the uh, with the one. Did you purchase any dolls special for this exhibit, or were these all I that you not. just had? I did not. <laughs> I bet it might have and, been and a little something. we left them at home, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they couldn't. They couldn't all make oh. it. There's the there's the uh, three, and there's the one. Oh, look and at you that. can definitely see the that family such... resemblance. Yes. This three uh, is also a very very rare, and it's not to be confused with the handwork uh, three, Roman numeral one one one. This is and signed, it does get Simon confused. and Helbig, one, one, one. Now this bridal series over here, the mother <laughs> of the bride, she is just to die for. Isn't she wonderful? She is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Was no. she always the mother of the bride? No. 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 This is, this is what just We call her because we <laughs> play <laughs> dolls too. I <laughs> love it. And the priest was not always a priest, but our dear friend and Seattle Doll Club member, Joyce Coughlin dressed him as a priest, and uh, so I thought, well, he he belongs in this wedding scene. Oh man! Now you have some flower girl, flower girl over here in the 1920s, the 890, with her little wardrobe. She's literally a flower girl, and a couple of brides, a 1079, and a right there, and, of and the little Tom Thumb, Tom and thumb. so and cute. But this dress is fabulous. There Tell us about is. the box that she's standing next to. This is, uh, once again, the 1159 made for Jumeau or SFBJ, the French trade. And here is her box. Um, Shelley could read that in French, but it basically <laughs> is the department store of J.B. Florence and Sons. And it says, a sweet marriage basket. And this was usually in France, this was given to the bride from her groom as a gift. Oh. And, uh, fun. Mary. Well, we need to restart that tradition. I like that a lot. <laughs> Sounds good I like that a lot. Now, this whimsical character we have uh, just been loving. She is so happy and chubby and lifelike, and she has those teeth up there. Oh, tell us about her. Well, as far as I know, she's the only one of this mold. Um, perhaps this going out can uh, have others emerge. She's Mark I've never six, seen one. Simon and Helbig six for Heinrich can work. And we think she's around 1910. But in all my years of collecting this, this is the only one I've seen. I have never seen one. As soon as I saw her, I wanted to immediately know all about her. <laughs> she is wonderful. She definitely wonderful makes, you, makes your day. <laughs> and then this cute little hospital of East India. Did you Isn't purchase that? all of this at all one time? All together, all together. And I included this because it's, even though they aren't marked very obvious faces come out of here that that scream Simon and Helbig and and the other makers I'm sure too but um it was really just a really good excuse to show them as well yes <laughs> it's wonderful it's so wonderful I am putting in a special request for a cupy special exhibit Ooh. someday oh we can <laughs> do that just me just me we'll have to listen very hard well what can our viewers look forward to from the two of you in the coming years. I know you've been this yes. once you get over this, but now now it's out there in the world. And thank you so much for taking the time to do this video and to share oh, it with everybody. Thank you so much. We're just thrilled to be on Ruby Lane. We you encourage guys are people beautiful. to share. Mm -hmm. Share yeah, the video. Things. That's share. the best thing that you can yeah. do is share the video share and just and they're dolls. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's, don't be afraid to joy. talk about it and to yep. show them and to get them out. Right, right, right. yeah, and enjoy them. Yeah. yeah. That's what you do. Yep. That's what we do. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.